Hello, my name is Trifon Sivenes, and along with George Kutromanos and Tassos Micropolis today, I'll be presenting you our research regarding the use of first-person view drones via head-mounted displays and their suitability for education. A drone is generally defined as an aerial robot that has no pilot on board, that can fly autonomously on its own or be remotely controlled by a user. A quick review of the literature will reveal that drones appear under different names, terms and abbreviations. However, every term and abbreviation is basically describing the drone from a different perspective. Therefore, for the purpose of our study, we'll continue on calling them drones. So drones have evolved quite a bit, and we can see in research literature an increased interest around them. This is based in two factors. The first one is their aerial characteristics that no other robot category possesses. For instance, their ability to fly and their ability to capture aerial data. The second one has to do with additional technologies that can be used in collaboration with the drones, opening more use cases, making them more appealing. As a result, drones have been used today in various fields, as you can see in the images below, such as agriculture, media and entertainment, telecommunications infrastructure, and lastly, there seems to be an increased interest in using drones in education. Research around drones in an educational context started appearing during 2010 and afterwards. Initially, researchers used readily available drones or created and manufactured their personal ones. However, a new category of drones emerged during 2014 with the announcement of Teledrone aim to be used for educational purposes and specifically STEM users. Since the initial inception of the first educational drone, we saw quite a few educational drones pop up. We can control the drones using a typical gamepad or through a smart device, such as a smartphone or a tablet. The only requirement is for the user to pair the controller via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth and he's ready to perform a flight. One downside of flying with a gamepad is the fact that the user has to constantly keep his eyes to the drone, and he is therefore able to fly the drone within his line of sight, as you can see in the illustration below. He could use a mobile app in order to fly the drone. These apps usually have a virtual gamepad for the user to control the drone, and they show the drone's camera feed, among other data. However, there are several downsides to this as well such as the limitation of the size of the screen of the mobile phone, or weather conditions, such as increased sunlight that could hinder the pilot's ability to see the drone's camera feed or the virtual gamepad in his phone. To solve this problem, newer technologies were utilized in collaborations with drones. Recently, the concept of flying a drone using head-mounted display kits appeared. Through this way of flying, the user has to wear a head-mounted display that covers his eyes and therefore his line of sight. He has to use a gamepad in order to control the drone, and he is able to pilot the drone by seeing the drone's footage in real time before his eyes. One of the key results in several studies around drones has to do with the drone's ability to capture aerial footage. And since the drone looks down to the objects from above, it resembles like the bird's eye view, so the pilot is basically feeling like he's flying. This feeling seems to be amplified when the pilot uses a head-mounted display, since they get the sensation they're actually flying in real time and they're experiencing the flight in first person. This sort of flying via head-mounted display is called first-person view flying. We investigated into the affordances and benefits of head-mounted displays and drones and the results, as you can see, seem fairly promising. Apart from the studies that report higher immersion, we investigated head-mounted displays and drones in educational contexts. Even though drones in education seem fairly popular, little research has been done in the utilization of head-mounted displays and drones for educational purposes. Therefore, after identifying the research gap, the aim of our study was to investigate the factors that influence the use of first-person view drones in order to determine their suitability in both teaching and learning. The rationale behind this has to do with the fact that the teacher is an important catalyst in the adoption of any technology in the classroom. 
In other words, if the teacher isn't confident in using such technology, he will not adopt it in his classroom. Specifically, we investigated special presence, simulator sickness, and usability. As far as methodology goes, our sample consisted of 60 primary in service teachers that were attending a master's course in our university. We collected our data using Google Forms and we used three scales that you can see in the presentation, namely Temple Presence Inventory, the Simulator Sickness Questionnaire, and the Systems Usability Scale. As far as the equipment goes, we used a commercial first-person view flying kit from DJI that we didn't customize nor configure, and we used the factory presets. On your left, you can see a picture of the FPV kit from DJI, and on your right, you can see a picture of an in-service teacher actually flying the drone. We divided our procedure in three steps. In the first step, we introduced to each teacher the concept of drones, their controls, use cases, their affordances, in order to familiarize them with the drone and its technology. In the second step, we had them actually interact with the drone. Initially, we had a five-minute warm-up flight where the teachers basically learned how to control the drone without wearing the head-mounted display. At this point, our intention was for the teachers to actually learn how to control the drone and perform maneuvers with it. Afterwards, they had 15 minutes in order to fly the drone wearing the head-mounted display in order to experience the full first-person view experience. The teachers had to perform four tasks of gradual difficulty. For this, we placed four boxes in the outdoors premises of our university, and the teacher's task was to fly the drone, reach the boxes, and take a photograph of them using the drone's camera. As far as our analysis goes, we calculated minimum, maximum, and standard deviation following the guidelines of each scale that you see in the presentation below. Moving on to the results. Regarding special presence, Overall, the teachers believe that the first-person view drones offer an increased sense of presence. They also felt that they were in the same place as the objects they saw and wanted to reach them or touch them. We also found similar results in the research literature in non-educational research. Regarding the simulator sickness results, we noted that two categories rated the highest, namely disorientation and oculomotor. However, we don't have similar studies to compare them to with FPV drones. On the other hand, comparing these findings to others of those technologies that use similar smart wearable devices, our results seem to be relatively low on the sickness scale. As far as usability goes, the teachers acknowledge the FPV drones' perceived usability, and they're quite positive towards their potential use in education. As you can see, the majority of the teachers would like to use them in their classroom and considers them fairly easy to use. What's most interesting is that even though our sample wasn't quite familiar with the drones and their technology, they feel that they don't need technical support in order to use them in their classroom. Lastly, this is one of the first studies that examines in-service teachers' special presence, sickness and usability of first-person view drones. And overall, the FPV drone was well received, and the majority of the teachers would like to use it again in their teaching. One limitation has to do with our equipment. We didn't want to use a custom kit, and we didn't want to mix and match drones and head-mounted displays from different manufacturers, as our intention was a seamless experience for the teacher. So probably a custom kit could yield different results. The implications that were identified have to do with drone manufacturers, and since there seems to be an increased interest around educational drones, it could help them in creating a new segment of educational first-person view drones. Lastly, future studies could examine the use of FPV drones using different kits, bundles, or different sample. This concludes our presentation in FPV drones. I would like to thank you for your time.